Hi guys and welcome to another Divi video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignertechtips.com. Well today we're going to put together this great little cube slider. It's a wonderful thing to have on your site and to do this today we're using the Divi Essential plugin. I'll put the link below this video. And with this plugin you get 40 plus modules, 400 layouts and 500 downloads. It's crazy the amount of extra stuff you get with this. It really is a fantastic addition to Divi. So let's get started. This is really easy to do. So what I'll do is enable my Visual Builder. Once enabled, I'm going to go down and just delete that little module right there. And the section's got a row, a green tab with one column in it. I'm just simply going to add a new module. Divi comes as standard with all the light grey modules, plenty enough to build just about any site. When you add the Divi Essentials, you get all these light blue ones here, and there's plenty of them. And down the bottom here, you've got more of the Divi Originals. So let's just add our little 3D cube slider. There it is, first one. And first thing we need to do is add an item. Okay, and it's put some a little bit of content in there. We need to add an image. It's going to prompt us straight away to add an image. So there's our image. There's our heading and our content text there. Alt text should be something about your image. A lot of people use it for putting in keywords and geolocation data and that. That's entirely up to you, but really it should be something descriptive about your image. If we move on down to the text, here's where you can put in your heading and text. I'll leave that just like it is. I guess I'll put in something more that fits better for the crowd right there. Okay, and moving on down. If you want to link each of these slides to something, put your link in here. I'll just put a hashtag in. And you can have it linked in the same window if you're in linking to something else on your site here or you can have it in a new tab which I'd recommend if you're linking to an external site. So let's go on and move over to our design tab here. Here's the heading settings. Well I'm going to make my heading bold. I'm going to capitalize it. It's already capital anyway I typed it in capitalized. I'm going to make it white I'm going to make it a lot bigger. Something like that. And just to make it stand out a bit more, I think I'll give it a little bit of text shadow. There we go. Okay. Let's move on down. And you can adjust everything as you can with most modules there. You can choose your fonts and styles, etc. I'm going to leave it fairly simple. If you want to give the heading a border, you can do here. Just give it a few pixels. And as you can see, it adds a border to it, which is a nice effect. But I'm not going to use one today for this particular thing. And you can do the same with the content also. Now here's the content settings. This is really interesting because you can bring it down or you can move it left and right if you want to. If you want to have your title and content over to one side, you can do that simply. If you mess with it and don't like what you've done, simply select it and delete it. It'll go back to the default for you. But for me, the vertical position is great because we can put it down where it's darkest or position your, your writing where it's darkest down there. So I'll put mine right there. Again, you can change the font, the weight, the styles etc. I'm going to leave mine pretty much the same. I'm going to make that text white. And I think I'll split it up so it doesn't go quite the whole width of the image right there. To do that I'm going to go back into my content into the text and let's split it up after aspect I suppose. There we go. I actually don't want to double gap there with WordPress as I'm sure you know if you hit enter it'll put a double space in there if you hit shift enter it'll just do a single space which will work better for me today great so let's go back to our design 
content spacing. Here they've got all kind of spacing options. You can push the content further down from the, the heading with margins and paddings. And then you've got specific content for the margins and padding. And then you've got your general margin and padding on the bottom. So it's pretty, pretty unlimited what you can do. Also with your content, I didn't cover that. You can give it a border as well, I believe. Yeah, here's the border for the content. So if you wanted to put a border just around your your content, say let's put one just at the top. Let's make it two pixels. And let's make it white. And then you could add some padding to push that down a little bit. Back with the spacing if we close up the content there. Here's our content. We we'll use padding, just put say 20 on the top, see how that works. Yeah, that's going to work fine. And I'll leave that just like that. Border, that's a border for the whole thing. I don't really want to put a border on there. Don't think I want to use a box shadow. Could do. Just leave it like that, I suppose. Now, when we're happy with the first one, we'll go on and do the others. So I'm fairly happy with that. What I'm going to do is just save this and I'm going to clone it a couple of times go into the next one add my different image change your title and text out whatever it is I'll leave I'll change the title leave everything else the same obviously you go through yours and do exactly what you want they can all be completely different with styling and things and we'll go to the third one we'll change that image and again change the alt text and change the heading great so we've got three slides going on there so if we save that we can now go into our slider settings we're in the main 3d cube set of sliding settings now there's our slides that we put in there go into slider settings yes i want it to auto play let's give it sort of 3000 seconds on each one 3000 milliseconds i should say or three seconds yep i want it to loop to go round and round and round continuously speed it takes to flip from one to the other is 400 mils so i'm going to put mine up to uh, let's say 700 obviously you make it yours as slow or as quick as you want as you can see that slows it down to me that just gives it a little bit more drama you can have it pause on hover i like that that way if you've got a bit of text there and we've got a link they can pause and read it We've got navigation settings down below, which most sliders have. Use a grab cursor. If we put that on, I don't know if it'll do it in the back end. Yes, it does. It changes to a hand when you're over it, indicating you can do something with it. You can use arrow navigation if you want to. And you can place those inside or outside, wherever you want, in the design tab for the navigation. Arrow settings. But I'm not particularly interested in having those for mine today, so I'm going to take those off. You can use keyboard navigation, left and right arrows, which is a good idea. And down the bottom here, we've got bullets. They've got a nice selection. You can have none. You can have a fraction where it'll put like one of four or one of five in there. You can see vaguely one of three. Or you can have a progress bar. And that'll put a progress bar up there that'll show you how many you've done. But I don't particularly want any. So I'm going to leave mine on none. Now the effect settings. You can add slide shadows and regular shadow. I'm going to leave mine alone because I've already got a bit of box shadow on there. Not going to do a link because we've got links for our individual slides there. Don't need a background particularly. At the moment we're using that white background i think if i put a background color in there it'll sort of detract from the actual spinning yeah you see that black background there so i'm just going to get rid of that one 
have it back how it was. I think we should be good to go. So let's save. We'll save our page changes. Save draft or publish if you're ready. And let's exit the Visual Builder. And there we have it. There's our little cube, 3D cube slider. And that is a nice little effect to have on your site. That's going to get people's attention, which is what you want. And it looks like I might want to add some padding to my content there because the actual line split hasn't worked particularly well there. I could have put in a, a brackets BR for a, a break. It would be very easy just to add some padding left and right. So I hope you've enjoyed that today and found it useful. Once again, that was the Divi Essentials plugin by Divi Next. It really is an awesome plugin. And I'll put my affiliate link below this video. So I hope you've enjoyed that today and found it useful. If you have, please ring the bell, give it a thumbs up, share, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.